Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about a brand new uh, Canadian whiskey release, uh, Red Bank Whiskey Canadien, um, as they say in Canada. Um, this uh, has just been released into the UK, um, and it has some celebrity backing on it. Um, who I will uh, mention in a minute when I give you the background information. Um, but I, if you know me quite well, you'll know that I have a bit of a soft spot for Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskey, I think, is massively, massively underrated, mainly because you've got the likes of uh, Seagram's VO, Canadian Club, Crown Royal, uh, I think Ensign Red, which isn't available in the UK, but I've come across over in, uh, in the US, which is just like a billion different whiskey flavors. Um, they are light, easy drinking, but pretty boring whiskies. And a lot of like basically Canadian whiskey as, as a whole is very much associated with these cheap bottom shelf mixing with Coke punches, that sort of thing. Um, it's not as interesting as American whiskey. It's not as good as American whiskey. It's not blah, 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 blah. But there are some absolutely brilliant Canadian whiskies out there. Lot 40 is potentially in my top 10 of all time. Um, 40 Creek, I think, is absolutely amazing. So if a new Canadian whiskey does come into the UK, because we really don't get that many, um, I'm always keen to try it out. Um, and it was interesting to, to find out about the um, celebrity uh, endorse endorsement, but ownership of this as well. So, before I tell you what this tastes like, let me give you the background information about Red Bank Canadian Whiskey and the people involved in bringing it to the shelves. The Red Bank Whiskey brand was co-founded in 2022 by Sean Hiscott, who has over 30 years experience in the drinks industry, music producer Gary Briggs and entrepreneur Rob Steele, who named the brand after the coastal neighbourhood in Nova Scotia where he lives. Oh, and also there's Kiefer Sutherland, son of legendary actor Donald Sutherland and a highly regarded artist in his own right, having starred in the likes of The Lost Boys, Young Guns, Flatliners and a full nine days of espionage action in 24. Kiefer is also an accomplished musician, releasing his first album Down in a Hole in 2016 under the Ironwork record label, which he also co-founded. In a fortunate nod to future projects, the first single from that album was titled Not Enough Whiskey. Reckless and Me followed in 2019 with a third album, Bloor Street, arriving in early 2022, and he continues to tour worldwide in between acting roles. The move into a whiskey brand seemed like a natural fit, and the team of four worked with Canadian master blender Michel Marsal, highly regarded in creating mainly flavoured whiskies, to launch a spirit that evoked the coastal region of Red Bank itself. Although the proportions, ages and distilleries involved aren't divulged, it is a marriage of Canadian rye and wheat spirit matured in virgin American oak, together with a corn whiskey that's been aged in ex-bourbon barrels, all bottled at an ABV of 40%. So, uh, Keith Sutherland, um, who his music career is very much secondary, particularly in the UK, to um, his acting career, which has been, let's face it, pretty damn stellar. Um, but yeah, his uh, his music career is uh, it's it's one of those where you speak to a lot of people and you say, oh, you know, did you know he had albums out and everything like that? And a lot of people are like, really? Didn't know that at all. Um, now, he is due to come across the UK to do a bit of a tour. So I'm kind of hoping that we might be able to tie something up with the brand and everything like that and maybe do something with him. That would be absolutely amazing. But obviously, that is asking a lot. And as you can imagine, he's pretty busy and pretty in demand. Um, but uh, when I was told about Red Bank coming over, I was like, that sounds interesting. And also... From what I've heard about his engagement with promoting the brand, it's very similar to Dan Aykroyd with Crystal Head. He is very, he's the face of the brand, but he's also incredibly passionate about it. And um, the uh, distributor in the UK who's got exclusivity for them, um, I know the guys quite well. I get on really well with them. Um, in terms, not like the whole business, but you know, the, the whiskey, um, kind of the whiskey manager, I suppose, and the sales manager got really well with and things like that. Um, and while I was away in the States a few weeks ago, he was down in London doing essentially a brand awareness and he was pouring drinks and he was really enthusiastic about it. So um, I'm pleased that he is kind of, you know, very upfront about the brand and really passionate about it and really cares about it rather than just, oh, I've put my name to it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rake in the, the money. So, 
Um, I've, I already had fairly high hopes for this to be a good quality um, whiskey because everything I'd read about it and everything I'd heard about him being involved pointed to the fact that there's actually some thought and care and attention put into this. He has also, apparently he said when he was down there, I think somebody asked him, at the moment, there is no intention to go into flavoured whiskies either. We're not going to find, hopefully, you know, Red Bank, um, various flavoured whiskies, you know, peach and salted caramel and apple pie and this and that and the other. Uh, poutine flavoured. So apple pie is quite American, but a poutine flavoured whiskey, which somebody probably has done. Ensign Red uh, did a birthday cake flavoured whiskey, which I tried when I was in the States, and it wasn't particularly good. But enough about other Canadian brands. Let's look at Red Bank. But first, what I want to do is actually raise a glass to Kiefer's father. That's if I don't throw it out of the glass. Um, very sad. I was actually going to do this video last week, and the day that I was going to do it, I had a bit of a head cold. You might be able to sense it's kind of still lingering a little bit. Um, but the day I was going to video it, we was actually announced uh, of the passing of Kiefer's father, Donald Sutherland. Um, one of the greatest actors, I think, I, I hope you would agree, he's, he's an absolutely stellar actor with an amazing kind of back catalogue. Um, I mean, his, his biggest films, you know, Dirty Dozen he was in, Kelly's Heroes. Uh, he was the OG Hawkeye in the movie MASH, um, not the TV series. Uh, Don't Look Now, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You know, 60s, 70s, he was absolutely huge and then kind of carried that on um, younger viewers, if I have any younger viewers, uh, will, would probably recognize him more as President Snow in the Hunger Games movies. Um, but he had a, a, an amazing um, filmography, a stunning career. He was one of those, you kind of, you looked at him and there was like this glint in his eye. There was this, it felt like there was this kind of sense of humor in him, even when he was playing serious roles. And he really could do comedic roles and serious roles just at the, you know, at the drop of a hat. He was you know, so talented, so effervescent. He was a, a very big anti-war protester as well. Um, even up to relatively recently, he was involved in, in protests and marches and everything like that. Passed away at the age of 88 on the 20th of June of this year um, from a, a, apparently a long illness. Don't know what that illness was. It wasn't announced. It, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a shame he's gone, but what a legacy he's left in terms of his filmography and also what his family, his children have also been doing, such as Kiefer, um, with Kiefer's work and with this. So this this is, is, is also part of Donald Sutherland's legacy. So I raise a glass to him in his memory um, and, and thank him uh, for everything he's brought to uh, the world of the arts. So let's look at the whiskey itself. So on the nose, now I don't know what the proportions are in terms of the wheat, the corn, the rye that's in this, but there's a lovely bright feel to it. I get a like orange peel, fresh orange peel, maybe a little touch of, not quite lemon and lime, but we're, we're looking at more kind of like orange citrus, but it's bright, it's it's not effervescent, but it's, it's light and zingy, and I think that's the wheat with a touch of sweetness from the corn and then a little bit of that kind of spiciness of the rye working really, really well to produce a lovely, slightly soft. There is a feel of grain. And in fact, it's not too dissimilar to the nose that I get with every bottle of Lockley. This kind of feel of being stood in a field full of some kind of grain and cereal. There's a light summery feel to it as well. It really is kind of like uh, almost lemon drops. There's a touch of sherbetiness in there. Hard candies. There's a juiciness to it as well. It's a lovely nose. It's really fresh and inviting. Really, really good. And then on the palate, That absolutely follows through. That orange oil, orange peel note, very much I get all the way through the palette, from the nose onto the palette and onto the finish. Again, bright, light, fresh. Um, I think I would guess there's quite a bit of the, the proportion of wheat to everything else. I think I, I would say the wheat is the higher end of it. 
Um, the corn is giving some sweetness. I like this kind of spiciness. There's like a little prickle that runs through the whole of the palate from start to finish. Uh, and it doesn't dominate. It allows this fruitiness to come through, but it's, it's a real like light fruit feel. Um, kind of like lightly poached pears, lightly poached apples. Again, um, kind of oranges and lemons, but the lemons is very, it's a little bit softer. It's kind of like lemon curd coming through, but you get this little prickle of pepper and almost a slight saltiness too. Um, and that might be an element of them trying to get this kind of coastal feel in. There is a, there is a kind of sea breeze feel. It's not, it's not overly salty, but there is this freshness which is just lifting all the flavors. It's very, very drinkable, dangerously so. I think some people will be trying this and going, there's not a lot to it. And there's not a huge amount. Not every whiskey has to be big and bold and beefy. And a light, easy drinking whiskey can still have lots of complexity, which this absolutely does. It might mean that you have to look for it a little bit more because there's not as much big flavors kind of going, oh, I'm here, I'm here. This is much more gentle, but again, it's bright. It feels summery. Um, you might want to put this with a cube of ice. I'd be tempted just to put the bottle in the freezer and pour it from the freezer. Um, I don't think it's got quite enough body and there's not quite enough rye element in there to work as an old fashioned, but then I kind of like my old fashions quite big in flavor. This would end up being an old fashioned where you wouldn't want too much simple syrup in there, but the bitters would probably come through and actually orange bitters in an old fashioned with this would work really well, but this would be a lighter side of an old fashioned. I don't think it's got enough body into work in, in the likes of Manhattan. I think the vermouth would just dominate it, but highballs would definitely work. Um, just a classic highball with soda water and this I think would work absolutely brilliant and a nice big wheel of orange. So it will work in cocktails. It is a good cocktail whiskey, but there is enough in here as good light fresh whiskies can do that you will easily enjoy this on its own. And, and as a out the freezer in a chilled glass in the garden in the sunshine, which we finally have for a change, uh, it's taken six months of the year to get to that stage, but we actually have some sunshine outside and it is relatively warm. This would be absolutely lovely, well chilled, almost as an aperitif, that sort of feel to it. Um, yeah, really, really impressive. I love the bottle. I think the, the bottle is, is tastefully done. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland does have a signature on the bottom of it, but it's not massively kind of like, hey, look, it's got a celebrity involved. Um, I really like what I'm reading about it. I really like, um, so just looking at the website, yes, Kiefer is front and center at the top of the website, but it does actually give you all the information about the, the other three that were co-founding it. It does give you the, um, the, the, the Marcel that, that worked with the blending. I'd like some more information in terms of what the proportions are. Um, I'd really like to know kind of like, what's the proportion of the wheat to the corn to the rye, but you know, not everyone does that. The most important thing is what this tastes like inside. Bottle of 40% and it does work at 40. I'd love to try it at say 43, 46. I really think it's, it's slight. I can see why they've done it. I can see why they've done it at 40. It makes it more approachable. More people are going to like this. You can get a bottle of this open and any whiskey drinker is probably going to enjoy this apart from snobby hardcore ones that know what they like and anything that they don't like is the worst thing ever. Whatever, get over yourself. Um, but I'd love to see a 46% of this. I think that extra bit of ABV would just really lift everything. 43 probably actually, 46 because of the lightness, the light touch of the flavor profile, 46 might be overpowering, but say a 43, 44%, just that little extra addition of, of the ABV, I think could really Kind of add an, another dimension to it. Um, a cast strength would be interesting. Um, I know they've said, or I've heard they've said, that there's not going to be flavoured whiskies, but I'd be very interested to see if they start doing maybe cask finishes. This is a flavour profile. It's there's a slight sweetness to it. There's that kind of uh, citrus fruit to it. There's that spiciness to it. There's a lot of things going on here that are quite gentle. That if in the right cask finish could take it into a, a, a 
completely different direction that would be just as enjoyable. The danger with the, the, the delicacy of this particular flavor profile is if you get the wrong type of cast that's gonna dominate it, it's just gonna, it's gonna kill it. It's gonna overpower and, and it will be kind of a bit of a mess. But I'd be really interested to see if they can do some cast finishing with this that will take it to another level or at least you know an equally good level. Maybe a tequila cask finish could be intriguing uh, or a mezcal cask or something like that. Um, but I think it's brilliant. I think it's, you know, for another one of these celebrity brands that are out in the market and they are all increased, you know, there's loads coming out at the moment. The vast majority that I've come across have not been brilliant, to be fair, because it's literally a brand have gone to a celebrity and said, can we put your name on this? They've gone, yes, you can pay the checks into this particular bank account. You can stick my head on a poster or whatever. And that's about the involvement that they've got. I really do get the impression that Keith Sutherland's been quite heavily involved in this. The team around seem to know what they're doing as well. Um, and the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the drinking. Um, and it's a fantastic whiskey. It's approachable. You can easily share it with friends, which is quite a lot of their marketing goes on about having a bottle that you can share with friends that everybody will enjoy. And in order to do that, you don't want to go big, bold, heavily peated, that sort of thing, because not everybody enjoys that. That does mean that you kind of limit yourself in terms of the flavor profile, and there will be the argument to say, well, you're dampening down the flavors and to make it more approachable, blah, blah, blah. You can still have bags of complexity and a light, easy drinking approachable whiskey, which is exactly what they've got. So, in remembrance of Donald Sutherland, I raise my glass again. And to Kiefer Sutherland, if you're watching, if you're not, I know you're not, but if the brand team are watching, done a superb job. Highly recommend it. It's uh, very reasonably priced, $44.99. It's coming in at. Uh, it is available. Uh, I do have UK nationwide delivery available, uh, www.spiritspecialist.com. Um, I have gone back to the distributor to say, look, if Kiefer is anywhere in this area, it would be amazing to do something. Um, a Canadian whiskey tasting with Red Bank and an acoustic get secret gig with Kiefer. How about that? Um, Never going to happen, but you know, you can but ask. Shy bands getting out, as the phrase goes. Uh, that is me done for this video. I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.